This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back into MVP Sports, and welcome back into another edition of The Fast Break. My name is Jake Neverman, and I'm along with my co-host, Dave Oster. Hey, everybody. Hey, Ricky Wimmer. What's up, what's up, guys? Hiding behind his mic a little bit. What's up, uh, what's up, guys? Is that better for you, Jake? <laughs> we need to face front and center, Ricky. Face front Can't and hide center. the moneymaker. Uh, Jesus. I'll just do this the whole time, and it'll be really good. Really Yo, good. That, that, audio quality. that mic quality is horrendous. <laughs> you can't have my mic quality, man. Before it goes off the trails too much, today we are going to be discussing our team rankings, our cumulative uh, team rankings, based off of our positional rankings. So bear in mind, this is not our, uh, what's the power rankings in our opinion, but it is based off of the player rankings for mm-hmm. each position that we've gone on. If you have not watched those videos, they'll all be posted by the time this is up. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. Uh, they'll all be up. 1 through 30, starting lineups again, the ones that we could predict. Uh, we did adjust as the preseason went on. We had to... And I, I will say, so people aren't mad. Like, people could have heard you, Jake, but they might not have yeah. listened to you. Oh, no. All of this is done by math. So it's yes. basically we took the five positions, added yeah. them up. For example, Luca was number one. So for Luca, the Mavs got the one Mavs point. Got... They got one point. We're playing golf if here, the, people. The, low, the lowest total... Is at the top. The highest totals at the bottom. That's how it works. Now, what it's we did map. not account for were injuries. Yeah, but they, we already Kawhi ranked Why Leonard may or may nope. not be. Rankings are, and that's why I put him where I did, because I was right. Yep. Some people may have factored we'll get into that. We will get into that whenever we talk about the Clippers. Uh, we didn't but count before benches. We, before we get into this, uh, check down below in the description. Our Discord it is free to join as the season kicks off. It'll be popping. Uh, we already were you know, kind of cra- crap talking the Clippers a little bit because <laughs> You know, Kawhi is already out indefinitely. Dave is guilty of that all summer long, anyways. So it didn't. It didn't matter. <laughs> Free to join, but again, like if, you, if you want to, if you want to call out our takes, if you want to, you know, rant about something, even if it's not basketball, but it's baseball, soccer, football, whatever. There's all channels down there below for that. Also, our Patreon down below. You can watch us record this live as we are right now. Every single recording will be done live on Patreon before it is posted on YouTube. Uh, and also, there will be exclusive content, especially for the draft stuff, when Dave and I start get going on that. Actually, later this month, I think, right? It's coming up. It's like yes, it is. Like next week or the week after is is yep. the literally next week. Amazing camera work from that uh, Trailblazers. Uh, yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to get on my uh, my homework a little bit. So Sophie and Retro are going to get me in in the lab a little bit this weekend, probably. Uh, no, I don't want your I don't want your views because I don't want it. I don't want to talk to you about until we until we talk. Fair. I respect that, I respect and that. I will not let Dave get in my head like he did with Sharif Cooper because that guy is terrible at basketball. And Tyrell he, Terry. He wasn't. He Tyrell was, Terry, okay. Sharif Cooper. There's a lot of, don't get into this right now. We're going to get into the team <laughs> rankings. 30 through 21. Starting out at number 30, we have the Washington Wizards. At number 29, we have the Detroit Pistons. 20, uh, sorry, 28, the Utah Jazz. 27, the Portland Trail Blazers. 26, the Brooklyn Nets. I almost called them the New Jersey Nets. Uh, 25, the San Antonio Spurs. 24, the Atlanta Hawks. 23, the Chicago Bulls. Number 22, the Charlotte Hornets. And number 21, the Los Angeles Clippers. Right where they belong. Into the 21 through 30 range. I have a a fun, unrelated, semi-related question. How long have they been the Brooklyn Nets? I'm starting to think back, and I'm like, are people going to... A while. Yeah, I was going to say, are people just going to be at the point where it's been Brooklyn Nets for like their whole fandom soon, right? Most people are. Wow. I was going to say, most people are already. 2012. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Wow. 2012. That's crazy. Though. It's been almost that 20 years. Wild. Well, 10 years. It's been like 12. 20 years is crazy. 12, 12 years, years yeah. is crazy. I remember it, which is, yeah. I don't know if I'm dating myself. I think I was a uh, freshman in high school when That's they crazy. played their first game. I, was, I say crazy. call them the New Jersey Nets. That's when they were better, man. They were better oh. as New Jersey. They actually went to finals as the New Jersey Nets. Just saying. Look, they had Kevin Durant. They had before that. I'm talking Jason. No, I'm, saying, I'm saying the team that should have gone <laughs> to the finals. They had Kevin Durant. They had Kyrie Irving. They had James Harden. Missed opportunities. Alternate well, timelines. I'm here for it. You know, I won't speak on that, but people who uh, caused that have now been held accountable in real life. So I guess we'll that, that's a that's discussion for another day, though. What? Uh, oh, because sure. you know, Kyrie couldn't play in the regular season for a reason. And now, oh, that OK, person, yeah. You know, getting accused. And yeah. also, you know, uh, thanks to you for Giannis for, you know, uh, st- uh, landing below Kyrie Irving because he's also a dirty player. That'll be a different discussion. I'm sure that we'll bring on as the season goes on. Uh, let's you're start just, out. Just crumbing out there. <laughs> they, went to, they went to back-to-back finals. Lost them both. 
Jeez. Uh, yeah, let's start out at the bottom of the list. Uh, let's group uh, these two teams together at the bottom, uh, the Pistons and the Wizards. Uh, I think most of us agree the Wizards are probably going to be the worst team in the NBA this year. I, I don't think that's that's too much of a, a shocker, I guess. He brought up the Pistons. I'm just he did and Ricky knows. <laughs> Not yet. We're with the, no, no. I went to Dave for the Wizards you for said, a reason. You said Pistons, and I, I got ready. You know? yeah, no, we're going to Dave for the Wizards. The Wizards are going to be the worst team in the NBA, right? The Wizards are going to be the worst team in the NBA. <laughs> I don't. I don't expect good things from them. I expect to have fun games, though. Uh, we're going to watch a lot of teams have some personal bests against them, which will be very fun. Um, but I do. I do think that the big thing for the Wizards this year is in the win total. It's all about growth. We need to see Blau Koulibaly grow as a player. We need to see Alex Saar grow as a player. We need to see, I personally, I, I mean, Bob Carrington for sure, but like, I kind of want to see Jordan Poole. Like, is he going to return to the player that he used to be, or is mm-hmm. he just forever this form of like mental boom? Like, I, I don't know what to think because we saw about four weeks of him playing really well uh, for the Wizards. And that was towards the end of the season where he had really good shooting splits. He seemed to be kind of all with it. But then the guy who was kind of facilitating all of that was Denny of and he's gone now. So I'm a little concerned. Obviously, Malcolm Brogdon starting out the gates the same way he starts every season hurt. So like they, they kind of need some sort of veteran presence in there other than Kyle Kuzma doing Kuz. I'm just, yeah, I'm not even... all in on it. Sorry. No, so. I was gonna say, no, you're right. It's even like, Usually when you have a group like this that's super yep. young with not a lot of vets, you go, okay, let's bring in a veteran coach to yeah. be able to kind of balance it out. They also have a new coach. They have a new head coach. So we'll see how that – he he coached uh, pretty well at the end of last year. But, again, when the expectations are so in the gutter, yeah, you can't really tell. They, the Wes Unsell Jr. was so atrocious as a head coach yeah. that I don't really know how much you can read into a half a season. It, it wasn't even really that, I don't think. But uh, of Keith in charge, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Ricky, I'll go to you for the mm-hmm. Detroit Pistons. Do you think they're a little bit low at twenty nine? Do you think that I don't, I don't know if I'd consider them the second worst team in the NBA, but do you think they're a little bit low or no? No, dude. Both these teams are dog water. Like, <laughs> like, like we are we are arguing right now who's going to be the ugliest girl at the prom. That is what yeah. we're arguing right now. Who's yeah. going to be who's going to be the heifer at the prom? That's basically what we're, that's basically what we're arguing. Like, yeah. it's funny that to me, like, I know this is with the wizards, but I was scrolling through Instagram. Their fan base isn't even expected. I saw one where the chick is like, she's like, oh, please, please. You're going to do better. And it's Corey Kispert. He goes, no, but I got a mustache now. He did. <laughs> it's like, so even did, them, it's, like, they know they're not. it's like, but you're actually going to win games and give us hope. Right. I got a mustache. <laughs> I have a mustache. Uh, did Jake freeze for you, Dave? No, no, no he was just, he was just thinking he was deep in thought, dude, your eyes. I don't know if you were looking they down. Stopped. It either looked like you fell asleep or it no. looked like, uh, no, I was looking down. Uh, I was, lo- I was <laughs> looking down. Perfectly was, still. I was looking down cause I got like four texts. One of the saints guys oh, broke okay. his leg. So that's oh. why I was like, Aiden Hutchinson. it never goes away. Like, no. cursed. but yeah, bringing it back here with the Pistons. Here's the only thing. They added yep. Tobias Harris. That's got to get that, that's got to be plus one win, right? Now, Jake, how many wins do you think Tobias Harris added to the 76ers be, for? No, no, no. Sixers are a different team. Like, this no, 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 is, no, no but, but just wins added as a player. Like, what, what did he do for you guys last year? Hmm. But here's the thing, too. Hmm. Will teams not put out like. For example. The Sixers resting Joel Embiid this year. Will the Pistons become a game where it's like, hey, we can we this guy needs a rest. We can rest him where the Sixers were not getting that treatment. I I don't think that the I actually think the Pistons should be higher than this. Okay, I I don't think that the Pistons are going to win like an absurd amount of games. But if you tell me between 25 and 30, I think that's about what they'll be. They had 14 last year, dude. Yeah, I think they're going to be. Yeah, listen, they're going to be between between 25 and 30 because one, the upgrade at head coach is so massive. So massive. Agreed. I'm not even a, like uh, JD Bickerstaff, mm-hmm. I think is a good coach on a great coach. Yeah. But they go from having a bottom three head coach in the NBA to having a middle of the middle tier, probably 10 through 20 head coach. If we did and, rankings and when Kate and when Cade gets hurt again, they're running the offense through Tobias. Cause he's the veteran out no, there. You're hoping. And the other thing that gives me a little bit of hope mm-hmm. shout out Toby, is that Jaden Ivy has looked fantastic so far in the preseason. Yeah. 
So mm-hmm. you're kind of hoping that that can that maybe he's taking a small jump, his efficiency jumps a little bit, but his off the dribble numbers have been great. His three is obviously not going to stay at fifty percent. That's been absurd through the preseason. Mm-hmm. But I think he can be around there. And listen, I don't think Tobias is a great player. But the one thing that Tobias is is he's a great vet. That's been known throughout his entire career. He's a great locker room presence. Even if I have my thoughts of him on the court and they're overpaying him, it doesn't really matter in the Pistons' vision because they 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 got to pay somebody at some point. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So them Fontecchio, Ivy, we'll see. My worry with them is their big men because Duran, we've seen that work rate issue is a problem. All mm-hmm. right, when he checks out of games, he is atrocious. Uh, B Stu, big fan, but he's six nine, right? So when you come against the big teams, it isn't going to work. Their other center, Paul Reed, I have a lot of experience with Paul Reed. It's a roller coaster. You love it's Paul a Reed. lot of up- he's I love Paul Reed. Yeah, he's also 6'9". So they have no... We, Dave and I were talking about this the other day. Yeah. They have no 7-footer on their roster. So when they come up against a team like Cleveland, I don't know what they're going to do because they're going to have severe problems because Tobias really never guarded big men, and when he did, he struggled. They, and he also can't go out on the perimeter because he's too slow on the perimeter. So you basically have to kind of... If you're playing the Cavs, you stick him on Mobley and mm-hmm. kind of hope that Mobley doesn't attack him over and over again. So the Pistons... It'll be interesting. They have some actual decent players. And when we talk about the Wizards, I'm not sure how many good players the Wizards actually have, right? But I think the Pistons have better quality on their overall roster. They mm-hmm. just have some some gigantic holes. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. And I, I want to believe in Cade. I really agree with what you said about Ivy and how it's encouraging to see what he's done in the offseason. Um, but yeah, so much of this team still comes down to like, did the vets they brought in address their biggest problem of spacing? No. Uh, Kate Cunningham has been in spacing hell for his entire career. He's driving in the paint against four and five guys. Uh, so by bringing in Toby, bringing in Tim Hardaway Jr. and bringing in Malik Beasley, like those are three at one point or another respectable shooters uh, from the outside. So Fontacchio is a good shooter. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they work that in and if that helps because they still have Ron Holland and Asar Thompson who are both non-shooters. So mm-hmm. uh, it's going to be, it's a lot on the coach, but I think from a talent standpoint, like they have guys who could take a huge step this year. And like, you're right. Like I could see them not finishing bottom two, but like the talent difference between the wizards and them is pretty big from a prospect standpoint. Yeah. I, I was also going to say, the reason I like bigger stuff a lot too is we saw him last year work with a spacing problem, right? Neither Mobley or Allen can stretch the floor consistently, right? And they also have two guards that were ball dominant. This is a little bit of a change because I think Cade, and we talked about it at length, is yeah. that Cade is a better off ball guard. Uh, right now is what we see at least. Mm-hmm. If he had spacing, I think that could change, but they still lack a true point guard, which is one of their biggest setbacks. So it'd be interesting because they do have a lot of capital. They've been known to make trades at the deadline before. So. We'll see if they go out and get a three-point guard. I don't think they're going to be a playing team, but I don't think they're going to be the 14-win team again, like we said before. I think they should win some more games, obviously injury-dependent. Uh, the next three teams will also group then because kind of, again, these teams are not going to be playoff or playing teams most likely, but they could be could be exciting to some. The Blazers, Nets, and Spurs. Uh, we'll start out with the Blazers. Uh, Dave, you and I tried to watch a broadcast the other day of uh, them playing against Ulm. And, uh, yeah, I, I had a headache by the end about the first uh, commercial break. It wasn't even a commercial break. It was just I a stop. I don't understand how no one can buy the TV rights to a game of basketball in the NBA. That's Because it was it, a dog water game and no one wanted to watch it. Uh, right. but, but there was clearly an audience that there was, uh, I want to say there was like 30 plus scouts in attendance. <laughs> exactly like there was, like... there was a lot of people with interest, genuine interest mm-hmm. for this game because two first round prospects were playing against the Blazers, and instead we've got in-house camera work and live replays going on during the game. Double replays. Missing possessions for two different cuts of, like, terrible camera angles. It was... It It felt terrible, and I watched it this morning because I I really wanted to see the prospects Mm -hmm. play, and, like, I felt nauseous. Yep. I had a headache. It's like in the NFL, and they'll black black teams out. That's what it it was. Yeah. It was terrible. Um, But to their credit in the Blazers, they didn't play like half their team. So, you know, the, the, the test that I think a lot of people who are interested in the scouting side of things didn't get to see that, but got to see something. But yeah, no, as far as this season in the Blazers ranking, huh, worst coach in the NBA. Um, I think that they have 
the same problem they started last year with was they got too many guards, not enough spots on the roster. Uh, now that they've stacked up on wings, a uh, great addition in the offseason with Denny Avdia. Um, they kept Robert Williams for the moment. We expect him to be uh, on a contender probably by midseason if he doesn't get hurt before then. If yeah. he does, great. He'll probably get hurt again after that trade then. Um, <laughs> it's just rookie, or I'm sorry, youth competitions. Is that That's the whole team. Like, we're watching basically a G League team run out and like it's all hype. Anthony Simons is dope. Love the kid since he was like 19 coming in the NBA with no college experience. But like he's clearly just a gunner in that same mold as like Tyler Hero. Like he's a great shooter. He's not good enough as your one. He's not good enough as defender. So what is he? You know, you figure hope, it out, right? Yep. Yeah. You, you figure out, you find someone who is interested in paying somebody that. Cause I mean, like he, he's. He's a great shooter, though, to his credit. But, like, you got him, you got Scoot. Shaden Sharp uh, instantly hurt, because that's what Shaden Sharp does. Uh, oozing with potential, but always hurt. I don't know. I- I'm, I'm... It's a lot of question marks, right? It's just, you literally have no idea. That's I want to see a good team play, and I think for the fourth year in a row, we're going to see a team folded in before, like, the end of February. Yeah, and Chauncey that's Bill's my fear. Head, and Chauncey Bill just still their head coach. That yeah, I started is with he, the worst coach. Is he the worst coach? Because I thought we were yeah. talking the other day that there was a coach, and I can't think. of There's got to be a coach no. worse, right? No, and I I've never said so there's so anybody currently. else. Okay. Yeah, I've always said it's Chauncey. There are um, some bad ones, but I, I strictly stand by Chauncey as the worst. Yeah, but the the, the team just has so many guys who I want to like. So mm-hmm. like, I will yeah. watch the games, but I don't expect them to win. Almost oh, wow. any of them. Like, I don't know who... The, if if it was Wizards, Blazers, I'm picking I Blazers. guess I would favor the Blazers. Yeah, because Grant. That's literally why. Jeremy Grant. Don't, and yeah, Jeremy. he's another guy who will... What will he bring back in trade? Or will he just continue to cash he's checks not getting for traded. 40 games? He's not getting traded. Yeah. That man has not had to work in April since 2021. That he what? is not... He is not going anywhere. Ricky, I'll pass it to you for the uh-huh. Spurs. Uh, expectations this year. Wemby, obviously, another second year. He's already looking like he's a he's a minus favorite for a defensive player mm-hmm. of the year right now. Minus favorite. You add Stefan Castle. You add Chris Paul. Vassell obviously coming back. Kelton Johnson. What are your thoughts overall on the uh, uh, on the Spurs this year? I mean, it's interesting, right? Because like Wemby in his second year, this is a team that missed. The play-in by like, let's see, can math math here, 24 games. Yeah. And it's like, this is a team, like you said, add Stefan Castle. We'll see how he does as a rookie. But the veteran presence that they added, I didn't hate them adding Chris Paul. I don't even hate them adding in Harrison Barnes. Like, these are two guys. Harrison Barnes isn't what he was with the Warriors, but... I mean, it's better than what they had on this team. Like, this is a team that, like, I think the the main goal should be how does Wemby look in his second year? How does Castle look in his first year? What do we think of all the other pieces? And on the very high-end ceiling, if everything can click and Paul and Barnes can help this team, like, high-end ceiling, like, they're pushing it, is... Like pie in the sky. Oh, we we almost made a play in birth. I'm not expecting that, but like if Vic pops off, if Chris Paul helps them, if Harrison Barnes has a better year, if Castle contributes, I could see this team on the high end being a surprise play in team. Yeah, I mean, I I actually was gonna make half that point whenever it came mm-hmm. to it is that I don't think they're going to like you said, but there is a let me, do my Bill Sim- let me let me do my Bill Simmons look here really quick. <laughs> Just imagine with me, there is a world, right, where Wemby is, like, a top five MVP candidate. There's, like, Chris Paul has this resurgence, and he's averaging, like, 15 and 12, right? There's this place where Kelton Johnson finally finds some consistency. Devin Vassell, great player. Stefan Castle competes for Rookie of the Year. There's just, there's just, Harrison Barnes is knocking down corner threes. The 12th man's coming off the bench and giving high fives as they're up to, no, I'm kidding. That's Dude, the, Charles that's Bassey's the on this team. That Bass Daddy is on the team. That was, that's, that's, a, that's a good impersonation. That was my Bill Simmons. <laughs> no, but honestly, I don't know what their upside is, but mm. I think they could be in that 11-12 range where depending on injuries, and we'll talk about a team later in the West that now is already dealing with injuries. Like If they shut down Wemby versus not, that's, though, like that, that's always the question because yeah. Pop can squeeze out another, they have, 
up to four lotto or i'm sorry not up to four lotto but up to four picks this year i think yeah. they're not going to get two of them likely but i think the guess is like in a, in what is the most stacked draft in a couple of years i could see them being like wemby's now going to play like every other game or every you know a like 25 yeah. minute limit kind of stuff like when he's out there full go that defense clicks and it it is hilarious to watch guys just take a second guess when they try to go downhill and i i think that my i think that they're gonna tank one more year i personally I gonna, think this is dude they're gonna have yeah. three first round picks this year okay three they're gonna have theirs yeah. they're gonna have atlanta's because atlanta's gonna finish in to me in that 13 to 30 range and yeah, i'm sorry who the who's the owner of the bulls Jerry yeah, Reinsdorf, we're not going to be a top 10 draft pick team. They're going to have three not. picks. Well, if you lose in the play and win the lottery, you never know. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. The, Haw- the, Haw- the Hawks just did there's that. No, the there's, no, there's no kid from Chicago in this draft. It could be in our honor of Derrick Rose retiring, though. No, all I'll say is I, the only thing I, I'm, them I'm not getting my hopes up, even no. though I want to. We'll get to that. Hold on. We, oh. uh, the, the big letdown is their bench. Their bench just is not, it's yeah. not deep enough at all. It, it, as soon as one guy goes down, their team is... You know, kaput as mm-hmm. as they would say. I mean, they got so, Trey Jones is a good backup point guard. He's been he's that fine. guy. Malachi oh, Flynn, baby. No, no, still no. pushing that's Malachi true. Flynn love. That's a, San that's Diego a, that's State. Trivia, <laughs> that's a trivia Wesley's question. Brandon. Also, not good enough. Malachi just, Flynn's a uh, trivia question in ten years of random players who score fifty points in a game. Mm-hmm. Like him. Who did he do it against? Like, that's the bigger question. Bruha. I don't even remember who he did it against. Raptors? No. Yeah, wasn't the he Raptors? He played for no. the Raptors. No, no. Yeah, but he did it on the Pistons, didn't he? It was post-trade. I don't know. He did it on the Pistons. I'll look it was up. Was it the Raptors? I'll look it up. It's if, okay. it was the, if it was the Raptors, that's like the ultimate revenge game theory. Just absolutely yeah. coming to fruition. Pop off. Yeah. But no, I mean, you're right. They, they, have, they have no bench depth. Atlanta. Uh, not Atlanta. Close. Would be. Did they lose the game? Yep. 121-113. <laughs> How did I know that? How did I know that was going to be the outcome? Oh. The person getting somebody to score 50 and still losing. But yeah, I, we'll see. I, they're, again, I, the expectations are not there for them anyways. So they're kind of just running on free will right now. And just mm-hmm. the first, get three, your three picks this year. Probably trade one or two of them, right? Draft your would, highest if one. If you can get two lotto picks this year, you are. That's different. That's different. Loving. I'm saying I'm going to assume the Atlanta and the Bulls picks are going to be in that 15 to 22 range, 15 to 20, something like that. Their pick is probably going to well, be super high. The Atlanta you get pick, the Bulls pick could be 11. The Atlanta pick, the only way that's a lot is if it's 13, 14. Yeah, which, it's 13 so, through 30. And honestly, it could be, to be they're honest. Still, they're be. still. Yeah, that's actually, that's a good transition to the Atlanta and Atlanta Hawks. I think they're extremely too low. I'm going to not. They they are kind of getting shafted by this by these rankings. I can't lie to you. Um, they are, for me, I think basically a nailed in playing team this year. And I'm, I'm wrong. They're automatically getting the Hawks picks. It's the Kings that have a protection yeah, that's with the, the Hawks. One. That's the fourth. Oh, okay, yeah. I think the Hawks are way too low. We I think have the, Hawks... the Kings pick. Right, no, let's not, do, let's not do this. Trade we have Portland's circle. pick. I'm sorry, we have Portland. Yeah. The the Hawks though. I uh, go to you, Dave. I think they're too low. Honestly, I think they're a nailed in playing team, and I think they're better than like you look at a team like the Hornets or the Raptors, who somehow mm-hmm. are very high on this list or even like a team like the Warriors. I look at the Hawks and like, I don't know what their high end outcome is, but I do think they're better than a lot of teams that rank below in this week. East will help too. Yeah. Um, I think that Trey young is exceptional at what he does. Uh, flawed on one end, but just awesome as a facilitator. Yeah. Um, Dyson Daniels clearly has overtaken that starting role. They want to, they want to push him next to Trey. Uh, so our ranking there for bogey, I don't know if it would be that much different uh, if you swapped in Dyson there. Personally, I don't think he would jump too much. Uh-huh. Actually, I think it might drop a couple personally. Um, but really, the, the big thing is just going to be like Risa Shea's come in and looked like a professional basketball player from day one, whereas mm-hmm. like most other rookies don't fl- yeah. fl- like flat out. So if he can be like what DeAndre Hunter should have been, you know, did pretty good. Well, um, if he, if he is a, what Sadiq Bay was, right? Sadiq Bay could never shoot consistently, but yeah. On the Pistons, I mean. He still could never shoot consistently. I swear he did. I don't know no, what happened not. with that. I don't know what happened with that. Guy. Never could, sorry. never I'm will. Sorry. I'm um, sorry. 
but no, I mean, the, the, the sad thing about this team is, yeah, they, they've got a bunch of interesting pieces and I still don't think they've got le- like we talked about the center position being like the weird sticking point for them because Capella has been like one foot out the door for a year and a half now mm-hmm. and he's consistent but not good enough. And with the injuries back and forth with him and Inyaka, like if the team doesn't have a center, how far can they realistically well, go is the concern. And I was also going to say, you know, what tank them, right, was like. So Trey Young up at eleven. You have Jalen Johnson up at thirteen. Oh, way high, yeah. uh, Bogdan at twenty three. But like Hunter was also twenty seven. So like oh, having wow. Hunter and Clint Capella both, they both finished like twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, that'll bring you down a little bit and put you in this range. Yeah, bring it down. I mean, Hunter can't stay healthy. It's, it's mm-hmm. the guy's got a a reputation for a reason. I don't think it's a health thing, too. Also, I just don't think he's played well, even when he was healthy. Fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he peaked his rookie year. It's how many of these players have been in Atlanta and they have these these highs and then they just drop, right? Mm-hmm. I don't There's think that's going to be the case for Jalen Johnson. Player right? No, no, I'm hoping it's not for Jalen Johnson. Yeah. But we've seen it now with uh, even Sadiq Bay. Like he just dropped as soon as he got there, even at his just overall level play. DeAndre mm-hmm. Hunter, we saw it. John Collins, we saw it. Right? There's just there's all these players. John Collins, refused to get surgery. Yeah, well, he peaked and he peaked. Never mind. Let me not. That would just been salty talk. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I it, even heard her, right? Heard her. They trade me. Like, it's all these players with the Hawks. I don't know if they just they peaked super early and then the Hawks didn't capitalize while their value was high. Mm-hmm. Their roster is just a whole lot of, well, let's throw these players together. They're talented and let's see kind of what happens, right? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. it's a lot of what ifs. I don't yeah. know. It's just a lot of what ifs. Uh, Ricky, I'll go to you with the next team. It is the Chicago Bulls. Uh, <sighs> We were watching the preseason game last night. Uh, Dave mm-hmm. was doing some yelling. Dave was, was getting some mind. excited. Um, maybe it's the it might be the highest that Dave feels this season is the mm-hmm. preseason game against the Minnesota I was Timberwolves. Feeling pretty high. I'm feeling pretty high. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'll let you guys go. I don't know exactly the conversation you want to have with the Chicago Bulls. We're back, right, Dave? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, we're back. Like Lonzo Ball. Like if we if we can, I know only sixteen a night, and that's probably what they're gonna have. But like if we can run with this, like we're gonna be the best team in the East again, right? With Lonzo back. Am I saying that? I the mean, he hit that problem. first three, and I was like, you know what? We're back, baby. He hit the second three, and I was like, <laughs> oh, it's for real. And then he had a confidence third one where he just ripped it way too hard, and you knew it. And I was like, oh, okay, you're feeling yourself a little too much. Let's let's it, bring. The- if he can play well, if Kobe can have a year like he had last year, if we could Patrick get Williams could, dunk the ball, if we can maybe get Zach out of town and get some. Oh, Zach's more playing time. great. Zach loves Lonzo. <sighs> I, Zach loves winning, mm. which means Zach loves Lonzo, which means, <laughs> which means he loves Lonzo. Which loves, pa- need, Patrick Williams can probably uh, he played decently. Yeah, but hit the bench. We can get someone else in there to play for like uh, Carter didn't play that bad. Talentless Horton Tucker. That's nickname. Dave's Carter had in years. <laughs> Best nickname yeah. you've had in years. Talentless Horton Tucker. I've had that one for quite some time. Um, <laughs> but no, I think Vusi at the I top of the key looked are, good. But only yeah, at the top that, of the key. He turned back the clock. I think that's what we literally <laughs> had all of our guys turn back the clock to like peak bulls mm-hmm. for this rotation uh, from the We're initial back. trade. So that was sweet. Watch out, realistically. <laughs> realistically, we are a, we are good for the play in. Um, the question is always, are we going to make trades? Um, typically, the answer has been no. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. I, as much as we all are like, oh, Zach's gone as soon as he can prove that he'll perform. And we're going to trade, uh, you know, whatever we can get for Vucevic or whatever mm. for whoever. Realistically, we're going to sit on all these guys to the trade deadline. And then we're going to walk away and be like, we're competing. We're uh, all in on this season. On a serious note, I hope we don't compete and that we're dog water. Here's be, the two yeah. reasons. You ready? I already mentioned Track one. Class. And no, no, no. I already mentioned one. If we're outside the top 10, our pick goes to to the Spurs yep. and if the Blazers are in the top 14, Which their pick be. stays with them. So there's a chance if we're playing, we're not going to have a first round pick this year. It's going to be like right. when we drafted IO. Yep. Yep. Which, Which scares it's, me. Will be, there, look, there is talent in this draft class. We could trade in for a player again, like we did Julian Phillips, who looks great in the preseason, by the way. But I think that the big thing for this year is Bunch of what ifs is what I'm hearing on that front. Oh, yeah. The big thing for me is just down to if Lonzo stays healthy, are we going to give him more money? 
and how long will we allow Josh Giddy to be Josh Giddy on our roster? Mm-hmm. Um, there was already talks of an extension for him where I tried to lowball him out the gates, which I don't mind the idea of doing that. <laughs> lowball but, him outside the gate. Yeah, why not? He he just came off of a terrible year with the uh, Thunder. Yeah, he had a good performance in the Olympics, but back here, uh, uh, literally the game that we just watched, he could not shoot to save his life. And mm-hmm. his flaws are still his flaws. Um, I don't know that he would even keep the starter role. Like I was talking, I was like, cool. Lonzo's going to play 15 minutes, but he's going to start the first five of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. He's going to finish the last five of the last quarter. And the minutes in the middle can go somewhere else. But like our best rotations very clearly, you know, Lonzo, Kobe, Zach, Pat, Mm -hmm. Vucevic. So we should probably do that as much as we can. Uh, The good thing is he's an RFA. So we'll, we'll get the, like, I'm just saying, and we'll get the opportunity to match. If we want to, if a team wants him. Yeah. Or we'll just make an offer blindly like we do with Patrick Williams. <laughs> He's an RFA, guys. Go ahead and offer him something. Oh, no, 20 million a year. Uh, From who? Who, who, are we, who are we competing against? Eight, Nobody. Actually, 18 a year is what he ended up Pistons getting. Was. It was the Pistons. They didn't officially they, offer that. No, because you guys had already signed them. Yeah. So who are we competing against? Nobody. <laughs> Ourselves. We are bidding okay. against no one. Go can, ahead, I, can, I be the, can I be? Can I be the level out of this conversation? There's yeah, how are we not going to be fighting for? There a is way too much positivity in this. Yeah, but you yeah. say how are we not going to be playing for it's a plan? October seventeenth. Can I? Can I? If can you're I, not a positive Bulls fan, you're not a Bulls fan. Can I just? Can I make my point? <laughs> no, 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 spring. No Ugh. interruption for this day, please. Can I just? Can I just make my point? Uh, okay. First off. I, in my personal opinion, I think AK is one of the worst GMs in basketball. I think he has the brain dead uh, syndrome that not a lot of GMs left. He's one of the last ones that has it that's left in the NBA. I honestly think. Um, I think the Crusoe trade for Giddy is an absolute disaster. Uh, I think Giddy. How can you say it's uh, a disaster before we even seen it pan out? Can I? Can I? Can I? We're already talking about benching the guy. Uh, no, he did. Me, I didn't. Crusoe. Crusoe. You see, thank God you muted yourself. Crusoe is. Uh, you traded Crusoe, who arguably was your second best player last year uh, and the year before, to be honest with you. Uh, third best the year before, because Levine and DeMar were there. So we'll say third. So top three player on your team. You trade him. You got no picks left uh, back. You got a young player who now you have to pay. That young player can't shoot. Uh, doesn't really, isn't really a great dribbler. Uh, can't defend. Uh, can't switch. Yeah, but he's a rookie. But he's not a rookie. Ma- oh, you're talking about Giddy. We're talking about talking- Giddy. I like Ma- 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 no, I like Buzelis. I saw you start like saying, like, you, I heard can't no. shoot and was like, I need to defend can't Bonnet. Shoot. <laughs> can't shoot. Only rebounds because of his size. Only reason he's not an above, he's not mm-hmm. athletic, can't defend. He's a good passer, not great passer. He's a good passer who makes great passes from time to time, but then also makes the stupidest passes that I've ever seen in my entire life. Aren't you a gay uh, fan? I was. This point? is called. I was. This is called watching and analyzing and realizing this player stinks. Uh, the but he's never saw, had Billy Donovan as a coach. Maybe he can unlock him. Yes, correct. He downgraded in coaches because Dagnall's a better coach than Billy Donovan. Uh, um, he, he can't coach unless he's got SGA out there. The other thing that I'll say is uh, uh, you cut my you cut my 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 <laughs> my brain off. I was trying to make a point. Um, what I'll say is the Bulls, as per usual, have one foot in, one foot out on what they're trying to do as a team. Uh, mm-hmm. They can make the plan. That's fine. You're the gonna be yeah, you're going to be stuck in purgatory for mm-hmm. another year. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll lose in the play in again. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll <laughs> you'll you still won't trade. Levine will probably be on this team post tra- trade deadline yep. because the only team that could come in is the Clippers, probably, mm-hmm. I think. And or the Lakers. Uh, Pistons aren't coming in anymore, but that ship has sailed. No, they paid the Lakers. The- no, he said the Pistons oh, is muted, okay. Mike. I saw it. You can unmute. Well, no, the, I made most the, of my points. The realistic teams for a Zach trade would be what? The Clippers, the Lakers, and... Uh, I don't think the Lakers the, are realistic. Who's the other playoff team that people are going to throw out there? Um, well, the Kings will still be there. Not the Sixers. They're always be there. Eh, maybe the Sixers. The, what? No. Maybe. No. Who knows? We don't Injuries have money. happen. Brother, we don't have money. The only three players we could trade you that would make Zach Levine trade feasible are Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid and Paul George. Done. You can, you can go <laughs> I'll take, take all three. that and throw it. You can take I'll, that and throw I'll it. I'll take all shovel. three and I'll throw a Patrick Williams on top for you because I like you. No, because no, you can't, you can't even do that because he makes $20 million a year now. So you can't even do that. No, no, the only team I think that has a realistic chance of coming is the Clippers. And I don't think they're going to come anymore because Kawhi Leonard is, is, is – well, 
Yeah, that too. But you're not getting draft picks back for Zach Levine. That, you got that, at least one. No, you guys. You didn't get draft packs back for Alex Caruso, who right. makes who was on one of the best contracts in the NBA and Correct. was a top three performer on your team probably but the last got, four but, years. But, but that's because we got Giddy. Yeah, and Giddy should be valued like a first rounder. Clearly, no, he shouldn't. He sucks. He doesn't suck. Oh, what I was gonna say earlier is the only tweet that I saw. Was we accurate. can fix him, Jake. Is at least Australia is close to China, so Giddy will be somewhat used to it because that's where he's headed in his career. Because that brother stinks. All right, he can't do anything. Like there is nothing that he does great in his game anymore. When he came in, he's not a great passer. He's a good passer who I makes think, great passes. That is, what, that is why. But what if working with Lonzo, Lonzo, Lonzo teaches him the way of the ball? Is Lonzo going to teach? Is he, unless oh, they get the no, 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 my. <laughs> This hurts. This hurts. I feel like I'm talking to two addicts who can't just take the needle out. All right, take the needle out. Take it out. He has not had a chance to play without Shea Gilgis Alexander in a hot minute. When he did play without Shea, Brother, he did look like a good point guard. But he's not good enough to be able to. But you want him to be your point guard? Good enough for what? We're a play-in team. Exactly. That's the problem. He's good enough to be a play-in team's no, starting I, point I guard. Disagree. Is he not? Disagree with that. Disagree with that. Wow. The rest of the roster is talented enough where you can be a play-in team because you have Zach Levine, you have v- Vucevic, but you have Vucevic. You have, you know, you have these guys. I like Buzelis. I like Io, obviously, future 76er. Ricky, stop hooking yourself up to the crack. All right? Stop. I'm struggling here to get a tourniquet. <laughs> all, all I'm saying is you'll be in the play-in, but there's no positives right now besides the fact that he's a good basketball player, Buzelis is a good basketball player, Lonzo played basketball. That's the positive. And yeah. We're taking Levine, our victory lap already. Levine can hopefully stay healthy enough for long enough for you guys to trade him for basically Depends. nothing. Depends. Will we want to trade him to Detroit? Because then he'll uh, magically have an injury that needs attending to. I don't, guys, I think you're forgetting. The Levine stuff was with the previous front office of the Detroit Pistons. The new front office showed no interest. In no, no, no. I'm just saying yeah, like did. a team that he doesn't want to go to because then he'll be hurt and have to sit out games. I, I don't think you give it. I don't think you give a damn about who he wants to get traded to. No, no, I'm I, saying if he says no, he's going to get yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's... Like he did that's last it. year. So, then, so that's the other problem. So he's only going to get traded to a team that he wants to go to yeah. on this massive contract with a guy who has hit injury history now. I'm legitimately afraid of a deal with the Pelicans, if I'm being <laughs> honest with you. Or B.I.? Yeah. AK, I... AK's got... Uh, so you wait, so you, no you, you, you let DeMar leave, so you get worse DeMar? That's, is, is that what you're going No, we get worse Kevin Durant, okay? Put some respect on B.I. <laughs> I'm going worse to Mark because at least Kevin Durant shoots threes. I mean, B.I. Yeah, could shoot threes. He's just taken less in recent Mother. years, but KD hasn't taken more than him. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying in terms of their game, I am not putting him anywhere near Kevin Durant just because he's both tall. near seven footers. Yeah, they exactly. both have unblockable no. shots at times. So does DeMar. They both have silky mid ranges. So does DeMar. Okay, so is Demar short Kevin Durant? Like, what do you want from can me? Brandon right Ingram played the five. No, he <laughs> can't. Kevin Durant. Right right All I'm saying is, guys, I love your positivity. They'll probably be a back end play in team. But Jake, 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 Jake. When we're the fourth Jake, seed Jake. and it's December, you're going to be real unhappy. Brother, right. December, right. December isn't the Jake. end of the season. So no, 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 but you're going to be really unhappy with us then. Jake. We won't be the fourth seed, Jake. so it's okay. If we're a higher seed than you, well, only the Brother. Bulls is going to be starting up. You know what's gonna be you know what's gonna be crazy, Dave? Both therapy sessions. Is when you all season talk about only mm-hmm. the playoffs matter with the Joel and the Sixers, and then you yeah. start bringing up in December regular season seating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah different teams have different better. expectations. Jake, Jake, let you have you have let us MVP. have this. You need to win. I'm letting you have this, listen, I'm only letting the Bulls you have, is gonna be a depressing podcast yet I again. Am waiting, I am prepared I'm, for it. It will be eventually, but it's just <laughs> a real positive. Real positive. Just a real positive, then we're going to crash. Listen, I'm like letting you have addict. that. I would assume yeah. who's a great basketball player, and I think that Buzelis can be a good basketball player as well. I'm giving we you those Julian two. Phillips. We got Dale and Terry. We got young athletic Brother, players. brother, Will brother, play? brother. Yeah. Dale, 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 no, no. Dale and Terry, take that out. That brother Dale stinks. and Terry <laughs> is legitimately an NBA player brother this year. Stinks. He's an that NBA player stinks. this year. Yeah, he's an NBA player on a bad team. Congrats. He, That's like... That's like what Javante Harris did for us like, last year, Dale and Terry can do and then some as far as his defense. He he really can. All right, like, I, I legitimately the, believe he team. is probably <laughs> okay. like All our right, I want to hear this. Player. I want to hear this. What is the best case scenario and what's the highest that they finished, Dave? The Bulls. The Bulls? 
the highest I think, I think we, if other teams get hurt, can finish as a sixth seed. This is the new eight seed every year. Every year it's going to be that we can finish. What, what do you mean you by know? best case scenario? Best like case for us, goes, the fans, or best no, no, case for their success? Best case as a success. Not as your, not because yours, you want to suck and you want to tank. I know. Mm-hmm. But the best case. Yeah, I, I wish we had drafted. Everything goes right with the roster. I'm saying. What's the best case? Best scenario? case scenario? There's no case. Um, no case. We make the play in. We win the play in. We make it to the playoffs. We see what happens. And the Blazers finish with a 15 through 30 pick. Yeah, oh, so there's, wow. there's best no case. Scenario. I'm just giving you this right now. There's absolutely no scenario unless every single thing goes wrong for every other team. Mm. And then I mean, your team already has had multiple injuries, so there's a chance. Yeah, that's correct. And I'm pretty sure our team with Tyrese Maxey is better than the Bulls. I don't know about that. I do know about that because Tyrese Maxey is... Uh, we'll get on to that. Uh, on to the next Isn't... team. We're going we're gonna to skip the Hornets because we're going to talk about them a lot this season. Cause mm-hmm. Dave talk and about a team with like... injuries. Dave and I are both going to love them and hate them because of the team of injuries that they'll be, they'll be borderline playing. We'll see if they stay healthy. We'll see where they get. We'll talk Same about problem. them more as season goes on. The last team I want to check on the 21 through 30 is the Los Angeles Clippers fell to 21 in our rankings. Uh, Ricky, I'll go to you first. Cause you are the news has come out that Kawhi Leonard mm-hmm. uh, is out indefinitely to start the season. Mm-hmm. They are picturing it as they want to slowly bring him back for his sustainability during the regular season and beyond mm-hmm. this season. I mean, what do we think? Is this just... I said it at work today when the news came out. Death, taxes, Kawhi Leonard not playing basketball. Three things you can always count on. Like, I knew this was going to happen. This is why I had the... I, I, I had the dude so low in my rankings. He doesn't play basketball, people. And then we're still like, oh, look at how great of a player he is. Yes, he's a great player, but he doesn't play basketball. He is a genius because all he's doing is stealing money from... Uh, from what's his what's his name Balmer and the Clippers Balmer. every year Balmer, just so stealing Balmer, so money stealing money to steal it because you're not playing yeah but then we're gonna blame James like and I'm a James Harden hater and then they're gonna blame James Harden when they don't win it this year it will be interesting to see the James Harden hate this year I know you were already Dude, well prepared be, as a James Harden you know former team strong. the wall but, is gonna come crashing down in L A see but I don't really hate James Harden like I don't hate him like I hate some of the other players I just have a point to prove you know I get that but like at some point it's realistic about their expectations right. Like mm-hmm. this team, they're, even if Kawhi Leonard is healthy, they're not a finals contender, right? They're they're just not good enough. As built today. Yeah, exactly. I think that they could be a Western Conference semis team. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. They could win yeah. a playoff series, but I if don't you're think that them, they could get past the no. second. If you're putting them up against the Thunder, Mavs, Wolves, Nuggets, we'll see about the Grizzlies. Like, I just don't think they beat any of those teams. You know what I mean? Yeah. Grizzlies like would you. be interesting. Grizzlies would be interesting because we just don't know what they are, but like it, uh, I don't know. Nothing to stop John Rant. Is it's just like so. my problem is, and this is going to sound so basic, mm-hmm. but I remember when they traded for James Harden, and Retro and I were talking. Oh yeah. And Retro said, "Well, we don't need James Harden to do as much, mm-hmm. so that's why it's a great trade for him because he's going to take a step back. He doesn't have to do as much. Mm-hmm. Now we're in a position where Paul George is left, mm-hmm. regardless of whatever you think about Paul George." him being there helped because he actually could take some of the workload off of Harden. And when Kawhi was out, could actually sustain a little bit. Cause I'm going to just quickly, quickly before I continue my point, the reason they lost in the playoffs against the Mavericks was partly, oh, partly Kawhi being hurt, partly mm-hmm. Paul George be, uh, not playing great except for two games. And then sure. largely cause Russell Westbrook looked like a scared player out there the entire time. He was mm-hmm. their worst player in that series by far. He was atrocious for them. I just want to throw that out there because I feel like that doesn't get talked about enough, how bad he was in that series against Dallas. He was horrendous. But back to this to year. Play him. Agree, yeah, exactly. Agree. But back to this year, I just think that they weren't going to put this, and now they are a James Harden team where they are going to be, when he is on the court, 80, 70, 80% ISO. He's going to have the ball most of the time. And they built a bunch of athletes around him, which is fine. Like, they'll win games. I'm not saying that they're going to be like, people are saying they're going to fall out of the plan. I don't believe that. I think they'll be in a, a play in to five, six seed, probably play in because now yeah. with this Kawhi injury, I don't think Kawhi's playing more than 50 games this year. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I would be pretty surprised at that point. Mm-hmm. How many um, of those games going in the playoffs? And three. Yeah. That's a lot. Genuinely, that's a lot, that's a lot for him. I just, it's, that's my whole thing. Like, when we talk about, we'll talk about the Sixers and Embiid later, but like, yeah. some players play through stuff. Kawhi doesn't. You are an expert. 
Like Kawhi, uh, the meniscus stuff is different because he literally could not play through that. The ACL against the Jazz, different, couldn't play through that. Mm-hmm. But there are injuries. Like when you have a knee sprain, you can play. You can push yeah. through and play. But he doesn't, right? Yeah. He's like he kind of. I don't know. It rubs me the wrong way. I don't want to. St- I don't want to strike too much on that because we do have to talk about the team as a whole. But I mean, outside they're talking about Norm Powell is probably going to start, and even when Kawhi comes back, Norm Powell apparently is still going to start. So I guess Dave, I'll throw it to you. What? I mean, their lineup, like the, the evolution of Derek Jones Jr., Zubak, Norm Powell, T Man, and Harden is kind of what we're looking at to start yeah. the season. It's not bad by any means. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Their one five game is going to be strong, and we expect that two guys who can really pull off pick and roll for a living. So I'm not concerned with that defensively. Yeah. You got DJJ who is just able to be put on whoever your best player is. Boom. There you go. Norm's decent, but like, he's not going to stop from most people. Um, the, I think the wild card is honestly KPJ on this roster. A guy who they bought cheap on because of, uh, his hashtag off the court dealings. Um, Used yeah. to be a fan of the player, definitely not now, but he is a good basketball player, uh, no matter what you think about him. So we'll see what he can do for them. And uh, I'm sure that if he plays well, he'll have fans again. I, I think, yeah. First of all, I hope that Kevin Porter Jr. fails miserably and other stuff happens, but I don't want to say that because that's just bad juju. But I think there's three guys that I'm looking at on this team, right? I'm looking at, uh, uh, I almost said, I almost said Jalen. I almost said Jalen. Uh, I'm looking at Jordan Miller, who's had a great, great summer yeah. league and has started to get he's minutes in consistent this. last year, too, in the G League. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm looking at Sky Jones, who's been mm-hmm. Kai Jones, Sky Jones, okay. Sky Jones has been good for them so far in the preseason. We'll see his basketball IQ still seems to be. Thank you. Not yeah, existent. You, you can't have a conversation about that. No, no, no. I'm just talking about like how he Agreed. just. And then the other guy's Kobe Brown, who I just like a versatile big who can kind of just fly around and do a bunch of stuff like they have athletes and they have young guys and which one of these young guys is going to be able to step up mm-hmm. because they're going to need somebody. If Kawhi is not going to be there, I know that the big, they're big about Norm Powell. And I think Norm Powell is a fine player. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember Great when we trade. were talking about, yeah, when we were talking about the Harden trade to the Clippers. I remember I telling the retro, I don't want Norm Powell. I don't want Norm Powell. Mm-hmm. Cause that contract is wild for a player of his productivity. I think, listen, I think Dubox is going to thrive. I think Harden will be good. Right. Derek. Oh, Jr. Contract. No, I got to look it up. It's not good. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. cutting off the cutting off the wing, the weak corner is going to be good. Yeah. Short rolls with Zubak will be fine. Like this team's going to win games. They're going to be good offensively. Defensively, they're they're kind of uh, they signed Dunn as well. Uh, ath- athletic, really bad. athletic, and uh, shout out because right, right now we're talking about it, Jeff Van Gundy's come in, and apparently he's their defense coordinator this year, and he's come in, and he apparently he watched every single game of the Clippers last year, I'm not shocked. and came in with and came in with notes to Ty Lue. And was like, here's what I saw. He wants them to be the number one defensive team in the league. I've seen that. So their defense should be there. That's not my worry. And their offense is led by Harden. So I again, I don't buy into the thing of people saying that they're not going to be a play-in team. Like they're going to fall all the way out. They'll be a play-in team. It just it all hinges on Kawhi again, which is where we are every single year. 19 mil this year, 20 mil next year. Yeah, it's just too much. With the new aprons, I just say. And it, and I always like. I don't like the argument that people use that like you like you would say not not saying you but I'm like somebody would say mm-hmm. well Patrick Williams makes twenty million dollars like, yeah two bad contracts does not make a right he's yeah. an right? incredibly efficient shooter I would probably put him in the top yeah five yeah. of like yeah you can't have him out on the court all the time because it'll hurt you more than it'll help you sometimes but like you know he's he's in that like buddy healed plus category you know well he actually shoots and does stuff. Um, never mind. I don't want to start more than buddy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not saying that I don't think Norm is a good player. I just remember that. 33. I just remember that contract for 20 million years a little bit. That's the contract. I mean, it it was a five year deal too. So it was. Yeah. That's the contract. That's the contract they use if they're going to move for somebody. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I think they're a little bit too low. But Ricky, any final thoughts on 21 through 30? No, can't wait to get to uh, the higher teams, to be honest with you. 40 what 50 minutes on uh i i will lay 50 minutes on the bottom half or not even bottom half bottom 30 (laughs) i'll let the disclaimer out we said we were going to go a little bit longer on the a little bit longer (laughs) they'll be no because they'll be talked about less than the other teams as the season goes off it's gonna be a draft this is gonna be like a mock draft video (laughs) Uh, 20 through 11 three hours no it will not be As always, we'd like to thank the people that make these videos possible, our patrons whose names are displayed on the screen now. If you would like to become a patron, go ahead and click the Patreon icon in the bottom right. And if you'd like to check out another video from MVP Sports, hit the video 
in the upper left. As always, thanks for watching.